did one of these Monday. Um, but I think as the CRA, you might get like your first, one of your first assignments might be a site initiation visit um, prior to the site enrolling any patients. So with the SIB, I mean, you guys sort of felt like this this is what we're pretending to do here is an interim monitoring visit. So the difference is the site is activated already for an IMB. They're enrolling patients, right? So they have all the access to all the vendors and everything. And so do you as a CRA. For the SIV, that might not be the case, right? You need to make sure. What are some of the things you need to make sure the site has when you do a SIV, site initiation visit? Oh, that they have this time? That's site selection visit. Okay, that's the selection. Yes. And Remember the SSV is site selection okay. visit. That's when you're doing the assessment of okay. do they have adequate staff. Okay. Um, SIV, they already have no, the study. They, yeah, so they would have signed the uh, contract with the sponsor. Yes, so everything's then. done. So like you're checking if uh, they have the right uh, EDC system that they'll be using. Correct. So all the vendors, okay, like EDC, mm -hmm. um, IWRS, mm -hmm. um, any like assessments, any other assessment vendors like ECG, okay. um, usually that's um, CardioCore is an ECG vendor, mm -hmm. IRB access, okay. Mm -hmm. IRB approval, approval and access to their website because mm -hmm. now IRBs have their own portal. Okay. Okay, so uh, the approval letters. So as a CRA, what are you checking during the site initiation visit? Because there's no source mm -hmm. at this visit. There hasn't mm -hmm. been any patients. Mm -hmm. So the only thing you can check is the regulatory, right? There's ze no source at all. Okay. Sometimes you're just thrown into a situation where you don't know like me on Monday, I mean, I was just thrown into a site initiation visit, and the site is using e-regulatory, mm -hmm. they have EHRs, for, uh, those are electronic health records, they have local IRB, so they didn't even have EDC access, they didn't have IWRS access, they had IRB access because it was their own IRB, mm -hmm. but as a CRA, I didn't know any of these things, I had to find out, I had to ask them. And it's very likely that you, as a CRA, are going to be facing the same kind of things. All right, so the, the SIV is important because it's, like I said, it's likely going to be your first assignment when you go out somewhere on your own for a, for a visit. So you're making sure, basically it's all regulatory is what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the most important things you absolutely have to do at your SIV. Okay, if you, let's say your SIV was only 30 minutes. Okay. You only have time for 30 minutes, what would you do? Regulation binder. No, only one thing. Protocol training. Okay, that's it. Okay. Okay, for my SIV on Monday, I had three hours. So I had time to do protocol training. I had time to look through the regulatory binder and I had time to tour and see if they had all the lab kits and all the investigational product. Mm -hmm. That's really all you have to do. Okay. okay, but if you only had one, like 30 minutes, protocol training, that is the most important thing you can do at a SIV. Um, if you have time after the protocol training, and that might be an interview question. Okay. I haven't gotten that interview question, but I mean, I've heard similar type of questions. Like, if you only had an hour to do a site initiation visit, what would you do? Okay, protocol and training. I would say I would spend 30 minutes on protocol training and the other 30 minutes on the regulatory binder, delegation log, make sure all the reg docs are there, and, um, or I would have the staff scan and email me copies of the reg documents. And I would at least look to see if they have lab kits and the drug and the on site. Okay. Yeah. So the, a lot of the interview questions are going to be, how do you think on your feet? Because it's things in the real world are never perfect. Like I only had three hours to do my SIV on Monday. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't think that was enough time, but when I compress everything, all the essentials, it was enough time. It was more than enough time because I'm not wasting time chatting with staff like you normally would do if you had like all day from okay. nine to five. Okay. You can really get it done in three hours, even less. And really, one hour if it's just protocol training and regulatory and IP, right? Okay. And even if you don't have time to review the regulatory, mm -hmm. you ask the site, email me copies of all your reg binder, of your reg docs. And the most important form on that is delegation of authorities log, okay. right? But at least DOA delegation of authorities or delegation of duties. They're called different things, but mm -hmm. it's pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but you do not leave that site at an SAB without getting a training, okay, training. and getting that documented okay. on a training log. Right. The, did you guys see a training log in the right binder? Yes. Okay. So it was there. It was done. Because if that wasn't done, that'd be an action item, right? So is there no way you could uh, also access the regulatory binder for that site remotely? Maybe yes, so sometimes you can because the, for example, the site that I did at SIP for, they're using, and it's 2019 almost, mm -hmm. they're using e-regulatory. Okay. So what they do, most sites are still using paper regulatory. E-regulatory is mm -hmm. basically that binder mm -hmm. online, like okay. in something like Intralinks. Okay. Okay, so you get access to it for the purposes of monitoring and then they remove the access when you're done okay. and they give you a new access next time or whenever you request it okay. they give you a new one okay. so it's actually easier than going through pages yeah. and scanning to just have it in the e-rig okay it'll save time yes yeah. so in the future you're going to see much more of that right now you're not seeing that frequently but at universities and at hospital large hospital you will see e-rig um, so that's SIV really in a nutshell. You're going to meet with the PI. The most important thing is the training. And then making sure that all the appropriate staff are on the delegation log. And then making sure that the IRB approval is granted, which is part of regulatory. The IRB approval is actually a part of regulatory. Okay, that's part of the reg. Did you guys see the IRB approval in there? In the yes. Okay. And that's one of the things that comes up on the on the uh, uh, monitoring report, right? IRB approval. So I just wanted to cover the SIB for a second, but okay. uh, you guys seem to know that, right? So anything else about SIB that you have questions about? EDC access. EDC access. Okay. So when I went Monday, the site actually did not have EDC access yet. So <clears throat> there's two things that can happen after your SIV, okay? Either the site is activated or it's not yet activated. Mm -hmm. Okay, or not yet. So if they're not yet activated, meaning any of these things are not, are not done properly, mm -hmm. they can't start screening patients yet, okay? In the case of where I went, the site didn't have their contract yet. They didn't have their contract executed yet, and so they didn't have EDC, they didn't have IWRS, they had IRB, they had a regulatory, I did the training, we had delegation log, I did the training log, but and they have E-Reg, but they didn't have a contract yet that's pending, mm -hmm. and so I can't let that site screen yet. And so it's in the record. Contract before we can. That's right. And, but after the contract, that will trigger like these things, the EDC, the IWRS, all that stuff. Okay, so activated, if you leave and the site's activated. Um, another thing is lab kits. Do they have all the lab kits there? But I think I mentioned that. Yeah. So most of the time, they're not yet activated after SIV. And then those are action items for the site. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now, the interim monitoring visits, which are the most common types of monitoring visits and like I told you earlier any of these could be potential job questions for the star 
scenario. Then Sh Shanae went over the star with you guys, right? Yes. Situation, task, action, your response. So any of these qu any of these items could be interview questions. So <clears throat> I think the best way to learn this is with concepts rather than memorizing answers. The students that understand the whole concepts tend to do better in the interviews. And sometimes they learn the hard way. After a few failed interviews, they learn that they're asking different questions, but it's the same concept each time they're asking them. Right? So, like for example, study, uh, if a staff changes, okay, so what what would you do if a staff, let's say you're at a monitoring visit mm -hmm. and there's a new staff member that joined. Okay. Like let's say you monitor here and you know Monica is the coordinator, yeah. but then Kobe is new. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you do as the CRA if Kobe's working on this study? I will check to see if he's been trained on the protocol. That's right. The concepts, uh, yeah. right? <laughs> That's familiar. It's right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. What else? Mm -hmm. um, I'll check to know if. Uh, it's qualified. Yes. Yeah. How would you do that? Uh, checking to see. Okay. Fifteen seventy two. If he. That's right. Maybe, yeah. If he's a sub investigator. Yeah. He's sub investigator. Fifteen seventy two. Fifteen seventy two. And then if he is, what else? Uh, if he's a sub investigator. There's another form he needs to sign if he's a sub investigator. Um, financial disclosure. Yes, absolutely. And what if he's processing labs? Lab certification. Which is which one? You have it. Uh, you both say, have it. Say, his I, license. A, I A. Who I A. Oh yes. You yes. have it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Your I A is certified. Yes. Um, so if he's doing labs, mm -hmm. okay, and how would you know what he's doing? By looking at the delegation. That's law. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what if he's not on the delegation one? Then I will talk uh, to the coordinator. Maybe That's he right. needs, needs to be added. Yeah. And then you could find out what duties he's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And um, training log, the monitors can actually do it themselves. Um, when I monitor, like at a SAV, I always train. But if it's like an interim monitoring visit mm -hmm. and there's a protocol amendment, that always requires training. Okay. okay. Like let's let's assume the site did not do that training. Mm -hmm. Then you are allowed to do it as the CRA, or you can just recommend that they do it. Okay. And document it. Document everything is documentation. Um, if you do, like, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you do, so what do you do with another star, protocol amendment that also, besides training, mm -hmm. besides protocol training, um, a protocol amendment, because there's many during a study, mm -hmm. there are average four amendments per study. So a protocol amendment triggers also usually an informed consent amendment. Mm -hmm. okay. So what happens if there's been an amendment to the ICF and you're monitoring, but the patient signed the old version, mm -hmm. what would you do? Uh, if they have visited after the new, after the amended uh, ICF, yes. then that is a deviation. Mm -hmm. Which will have to be uh, documented and reported. Correct. Yeah, because they are supposed to be reconsented for the. Correct. Uh, uh, for the and who who reports and then to who? Uh, the PI should report to the uh, sponsor okay. to the IRB. And the IRB. Correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. So yes, um, and then you attempt to get the patient to come back and sign mm -hmm. it at their next visit. That's a common, very common monitor finding, is uh, ICFs 
which have been amended that haven't been signed by the subjects, even if the subjects came in for repeat visits. Now what happens if you notice this for, let's say you found that out, mm -hmm. they reported it, and then the next time you come it happened again then I'll have to on train another them. patient. I'll train them on uh, the, re the consent or reconsenting process. Yes. And which is still another deviation. Which another I deviation. Yeah. And you should recommend to the site and then you should put it definitely put in your report. Mm -hmm. CRA recommends corrective action preventative action plan. Okay. It's called CAPA plan. Okay. okay. It's a uh, corrective action preventative action. CAPA. That's when you see major things mm -hmm. reoccurring. Okay. Alright? If it's just once, I mean if it's significant enough like let's say they didn't do a consent form at all. I mean, maybe that's only one time is enough to do a kappa. But if it's something like an amendment, you're seeing them doing it repeatedly, that you can recommend a corrective action, preventative action plan that the site needs to draft and then send to the sponsor for approval. Um, so there's a lot that can go on with that. Uh, what did you guys discover in your report as you went along? What, what were some of the issues that you had? Uh, let's see. Because this was like today's visit. Like you are the regular monitor, so yeah. sometimes we didn't know what information should really go where. Because when we say, uh, has the protocol been amended, we have to look at all the protocols and see, okay, they've been amended like That's six right. times. Or so how'd you do it? You just went through and just went through the, the various versions that That's are right. so far. Mm -hmm. So Matt, like, um, this happens a lot to senior CRAs, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of turnover in the industry, right? A lot of CRAs leave and go somewhere else. So the senior CRA will take over an existing site. They've never monitored that protocol, never been to that site, and they're just thrown into a situation just like you are today. So they do have to do the same thing, right? But they're, they're senior series. Mm -hmm. But they may not even know the protocol or any of the context of how many amendments. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were just assigned to it the day before. All right, so there's, they really, they literally do what you did, which is count the amendments by hand. Were any missing? Did you find any missing? Or um, there all no, I didn't find any, any missing amendments. Okay, so we saw thank God. We saw that um, the, um, the, the patient was supposed to be consent and it wasn't done. Did they say why? Uh, That's no reason. Did it mention that? No. Mm. Oh, okay. They declined. Uh, I think they withdrew from this, this study. Eventually. They, yeah, they withdrew from the study. They were, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they withdrew from the study actually for personal reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they never got to sign the consent again? Uh, after the withdrawal. Right, well, or I mean, even before, right? Well, they signed no, they some signed, consent. They, they signed, signed all the consent. Mm -hmm. Oh, they did? Yes. yes. Okay. To, to the point of uh, withdrawal from the study. Okay, but they're current on all the consents. Yes. yes. Okay, that's good. The withdrawal is okay. You know, they're allowed to withdraw. Um, patient can withdraw at any time as long as it's documented in the source. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. And it could be personal reasons. But as long mm -hmm. as it's documented, that's yeah. really all the PI and the yeah. site need to do. say not to file to that effect. I love not to file. They, uh, <laughs> they explain anything. Some CRAs don't like it because if they're overused, they could be abused. Okay. But I think it's better if an auditor comes, because think about it, an auditor doesn't know the protocol, doesn't care about the protocol. Like from the FDA, you work for the FDA. If your colleague comes and audits and he doesn't know anything about the protocol, if I were him, I'd rather see a narrative that's easy to understand. I know I don't have to guess why this patient was true. It's mm -hmm. written there. It's good. Or if a site made a mistake, they have a note to file. This assessment was not done because it was done later. Right? For example, like let's say with the assessments on the source. Like, let's say that this ADAS COG, which was done on 18th of November, um, and all the visit was done on 18th of November, 
but for some reason the blood draw was done on the 19th of November. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is not the visit. You would want to know why. Right? right? Because you have no idea. But maybe it's a valid reason. The assessments took so long, the patient didn't want to wait yeah. anymore. And said he'd, they'll come back tomorrow for blood draw. That's fine. It might be a deviation, but as long as it's explained why, it's documented. Sometimes deviations are unavoidable, right? Or it might not be a deviation. It depends on the protocol. But that's why I like note to files, because they explain things. Uh, what else did you guys discover in the report? Anything interesting or anything that you're not sure about? Well, I was going to ask you a question regarding the, um, um, the temperature log. It said in the file that a temperature log would be given upon request. Okay. So I would expect yes. that it's supposed to be in there so that... Very good. Very good. So, correct. And as a CRA, oftentimes you are required to collect and attach to your report copies of certain documents. And for me, for my CRA stuff, the temperature log is one of them. So I always have the coordinator email me their temperature log since my last visit. So I just tell them, hey, my last visit was September 4th. Now it's October 18th, right? 18th. Mm -hmm. I want all the temperature logs from then until to now, point. right? And they'll email it, and then that's it. You just okay. look to see for excursions, okay. okay? If you're not required to collect it, you still need to confirm the temperature log. So you can ask the coordinator either to go look with them on mm -hmm. the log, or many times now sites carry electronically. Mm -hmm. right. So either way, but just know if you're re if you're required to collect it, or if you're just required to confirm that it's being maintained. Okay. Either way, you have to write in your report. Okay. Okay. So when you're required to collect it, you have it on the schedule of activities. Uh, when you're required as a monitor, when mm -hmm. whatever you're required to collect, your lead CRA will let you know. Okay. Um, usually it's the same things for every visit, okay. but sometimes they want something because maybe there was an issue, right? So they will let you know. If, if you're unlucky and they don't let you know and they mm -hmm. expected you to somehow figure it out that you need it and you didn't get it, you can always email the site okay. and ask them. Okay. But that's why that rapport is, you need to have a good rapport with that coordinator. Because if you forget to do something that's part of your job, and you ask the coordinator, they're going to know that you're now desperate for yeah. their help. Yeah. And if you've been mean to them... They will both cost. <laughs> so that's why you should be not Give it back to you. That's right. I try to be very friendly with the sites there. Okay. And they give me things when I need it. But uh, actually, one of them is supposed to call me back right now. Because I, I need something. But this one wasn't my fault. But I missed something, and they're supposed to call me back. So yeah, like things like that. Communication with your site is important. Um, what else? What else? Something about the previous site coordinator needed retraining. Mm -hmm. And um, for what? What do they need retraining for? Uh, they needed retraining for. Um, was it clear? It was clear, but okay. I, I don't remember what it was. Okay. Um, I, I didn't write, did you write it, can I? Mm -hmm. Protocol, protocol oh, training? The, no, I, no, I think there was some kind of log or something that was supposed to I think it was to, about the temperature or something. Some kind of log, I'm not sure. That they were not keeping, and actually they replaced they that replaced coordinator with two and they hired two new process. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. that was me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I think I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Where, um, I'll just give names, one name, Flores and, and Edward. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I remember. So they were the new ones that replaced the old one. Right. So, uh, the, so old the old one was not maintaining a temperature log properly? I'm not sure what it was. It, they, they were okay. doing something that was into, that was questionable and they had to write why. Yeah, it was not. And then they, they were not properly trained on something. Yeah, they were let go as a matter of fact, they were fired. Yeah. Yeah, that did happen. Um, 
And him and I are still very close, though. <laughs> <laughs> he actually is at another site. Oh. He wants to be a CRA. Oh. That guy. I know exactly who it is. He's a nice guy. But yeah, he, it didn't work out for us, but it worked out for him somewhere else. But yes, I think it was something to do with temperature log was, he was keeping it but not filing it in the um, regulatory binder. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What else did you guys find? Uh, during the randomization visit, the, uh, the protocol had been amended and they failed, during the visit. Yeah, they failed to reconsent. You see the, what we just talked about. So they had to. It's a deviation. It's a deviation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it would have happened again, mm -hmm. it would have been a corrective Stop. action, preventative action. This was a messy study. Not a fun study. So there was a question I asked for safety aspects, and um, we're not sure. Safety. Safety. Yes, it says that there was a safety update initiated on March the sixth, mm -hmm. but what we're not sure was. Okay, yes, it was initiated on that March 6th to be reported to the IRB. But what exactly was the safety problem? It was in clear. There was no subsequent note to back this, and so we're not sure how to handle that. Did you see in the subject source for that visit? No. It is probably in there, the SAE report. Typically, when a SAE happens at the site, do you guys know the process? Like a Let's say you're at a site and a patient comes in and he tells you that last weekend he actually was hospitalized mm -hmm. because he felt dizzy. Mm -hmm. That's a SAE. Right? Yes. Um, so within 24 hours of knowing you that, you report the initial report. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's an initial and a follow-up. Yes. The initial report is most important because it's time sensitive. They need to get that in there so that pharmacovigilance, which is the safety team from the sponsor, can assess whether that should be possibly a SUSAR, mm -hmm. which is a su suspected, unexpected, mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. adverse mm -hmm. reaction. You guys know SUSAR? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Should Nate tell you? Yeah. Yes. Suspected, ah. unexpected, serious adverse reaction. Should Nate teach us good stuff? Oh, yes. So, so suspected, okay. That's, I think that's the most important word in that because that's when it, the drug is suspected to have caused the SAE. If an SAE happened and the PI and the sponsor determined it's not likely to suspect it as the cause, it won't necessarily make the SUSAR okay. list. Because the SUSAR list gets distributed to all the sites. Okay. Okay. So that a doctor in Maryland uh, can can read it and see that at this clinic in Costa Mesa this particular SAE occurred and it's suspected to have caused by the drug. Right? Um, that way if he sees patient that has similar symptom he can maybe proactively um, mm -hmm. prevent the SAE from occurring. That's the rationale for that. Well, you said there was a step two. The first step is... The, the first is the initial, then it's the follow-up. Okay. The follow-up is when it's resolved. So either when the patient in this example is released from the hospital, or maybe it's still ongoing. And maybe it's ongoing until the end of the study, at close-out visit. Right? So that's actually a good topic. So at close-out visit, COV, We've kind of briefly discussed every visit now. Closeout visit, you're making sure that all SAEs are finalized. And they could be ongoing at closeout. Okay. Like, I think an ongoing one would be if someone got cancer mm -hmm. and they haven't died and the study's over. It's ongoing. Okay. If they died, it actually, it's another SAE, it's death, mm -hmm. but it, it has an end date too. It dissolves, it, it, uh, 
it's it's uh, it's no longer ongoing. It's resolved. Okay. So either resolved or ongoing. Okay. Unless they are still waiting for the report of the autopsy. True. <laughs> True. But that would be more for the cause of death. Mm -hmm. But it would the death itself would be resolved. Okay. Okay. If I may ask. Yeah. Um, the from from our visit with Chris, uh, he mentioned something to the effect like, um, usually um, PIs are, or the doctors in charge are very reluctant to accept that the drugs are causing maybe very serious side effects and or maybe possible death. So with this, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised to see that there were, there were side, serious side effects enough for the patient to say no. Uh, for this study? Yes. Oh, when the patient declines to yeah. do the study? Yeah. Yeah. And, and those, anything that's known, suspected side effects, um, those are all listed in the informed consent. Anything that's known. And also, remember, the IRB has to approve every protocol. So, the IRB's job is to make sure that no patient is put at unnecessary risk. So sometimes protocols have to be redesigned to make it safer for patients. But yeah, patients can withdraw at any time. PI can withdraw the patients at any time too. In San Bernardino, we have a really good PI who's very involved with uh, for general medicine studies. And yeah, he's, I mean, he withdraws patients when he sees there's some safety concerns, even potential safety concerns, withdraw. And what's the proper, well, this is actually a good question. So what's the proper, way to withdraw a patient from a study. Like, give me the procedures. Oh, if it is uh, as a result of an no. adverse, serious adverse event? Just the, no, maybe there's no SAE, but mm -hmm. maybe there's an AE, mm -hmm. and the patient and the PI decide, you know, maybe it's better you don't do the study. Okay, anymore. so they will have to still come back for follow up visits. Yeah, early uh, termination. Early termination visit and then necessary follow up, and the PI has to follow up within the uh, washout period to see to it that everything is uh, properly resolved. Mm -hmm. mm, report it to the sponsor and the IRB. Okay. Mm, you don't need to report it to the sponsor. Okay. Or the IRB. Okay. For it's a, so it's an early termination visit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Early ET. Mm -hmm. ET or it stands for early term. Mm -hmm. If possible, sometimes patients don't want to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patient, mm -hmm. especially with psych studies, patients mm -hmm. are just completely change their mind and say, no, I don't want to do anything anymore. Oh, and one thing, they have to uh, make an uh, attempt to collect any IP that's still in the keeping of the patient. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Get the unused IP mm -hmm. in the bottle. I think exactly. But there is another thing. What if the patient is not the patient of the PI? Um, I think uh, the PI we still have to follow up with their primary care, with their primary care to make sure that uh, uh, whatever uh, condition they had is resolved. If that it's adequate care is taken. It has to be documented. Okay. Now, what if the patient refuses, like when the patient joins, mm -hmm. there's usually a form that allows the doctor to notify their primary care physician about their participation. The patient can opt out of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want my doctor knowing. Then it should be still documented that the PI had a conversation with the patient and it urged him or her to go to the, see their primary mm -hmm. care. Or a specialist if it was like a cardio issue, mm -hmm. whatever the case may mm -hmm. be. Or re and maybe referred to a colleague of theirs. But it should be documented. Okay. Like these safety safety mm -hmm. provisions should always be documented. If I may ask, yeah. if it's a psych patient mm -hmm. and or maybe a, a, a heart patient and they are on medication that if there are some medications, particularly psych medication, that it's difficult for you to just withdraw the patient from it, 
you know, start trading on what they do. So That's they right. Need. So would that apply here? Yeah, so if it's something like where it's dangerous to just stop all of a sudden, it's called a dosing schedule. Mm -hmm. You should follow the dosing schedule. Mm -hmm. And if it's, uh, if like in chemo, you see this all the time with cancer, mm -hmm. um, there's a dosing schedule, how to titrate down, how to titrate up. And cancer, in oncology, you're going to see SAEs all the time. So they have actual dosing schedules for the IP. Like... At when this SAE occurs, you should follow this dosing schedule. If this one occurs, they already have it mapped out for you. If they don't, you're absolutely right, and it's the PI's responsibility to make sure that there's no harm done to the patient. Okay. So even if they're not following the protocol anymore, it doesn't matter. It's patient safety first. And the PI can discuss with medical monitor for appropriate course of action. Okay. And usually the coordinator has to be involved with that as well. And you as the monitor, of course, need to make sure that that's happening. And as this is why they love RNs. Because you know this this exact thing you talked about is what you're going to be looking for as a CRA, right? Like, how can you just stop the meds all of a sudden? I'm an RN. I know this particular medication will cause, you know, you can't just do that. So what would you do if that you monitored and that's what you discovered it happened? Um, I will try to have a meeting with the PI and I'll bring it up to him as politely as I know how. I to tell him from what he said, to tell him that I know he's an expert and he knows and he's very busy. But the IRB, it is very important that we follow the guidelines. My job is to make sure that it is so I'm not questioning him but um, side effects are significant with this if it's done this way, what can you take a look at it? That's right. And you should document that. Okay. Okay, and maybe have medical monitor um, get involved. But if the damage is already done, but so, but that's a great point because if the protocol doesn't specify how to down titrate, technically the PI did not commit a deviation, but it's not good clinical practice to cause unnecessary risk to the subject. Mm -hmm. That's actually like a tricky, tricky situation. Maybe you would have discovered something that the protocol can be approved, and then you, you because of your note, maybe they amend the protocol so that doesn't happen again. And I see that happen a lot with CRAs. They discover something at their site, they put it in their report, they basically they find a um, inefficiency in the protocol, like you just mentioned. And then the sponsor amends the protocol because of that. So that can happen. And that's why they need people like you guys. That's why they need RMs. And why I think you won't have any problems finding a job. Honestly, <laughs> unless you're just horrible in interviews, but that's not enough. I don't think that's gonna be but the case. With a knowledge base, after tomorrow, I mean, your confidence will be like sky high, all time. Because you have EDC experience with a, in the class. Monica's gonna show you some more tomorrow. You're gonna see her IWRS. That's really it. Okay. That's really the only things you're missing. Okay. Is like. And IWRS and the, um, another EDC besides the Bioclinica one. So that's good. Anything else? Anything else you've discovered? But very good, very good about the dosing. Because that's, um, yeah, sometimes you can find holes in the protocol. <laughs> Thank you. No donuts for me, but you're a you're doing a great job of tempting me. I'll just smell your breath. <laughs> I can smell your breath after you eat it. <laughs> you can get donuts if you want. Thank you. All right, so we um, we did for a site interim visit. Uh, we tried to write down what we saw regarding the infraction items. On. So um, we made uh, we made a mistake. Is that the right way? Correct it. What is it? Uh, the site. Like how to initial and date. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh. But remember, you'll be typing. Oh. Yeah. So you can just. Yeah, and you can delete. But uh, it, it, like, if you made a mistake after, and it's already been signed, you can cross out initial date. Yeah. Your lead CRA should. Is, their job is supposed to catch your mistakes on these so, reports. So they're like uh, QC. Yeah. Okay. They're like they did your job for years, and now okay. they just read your reports, provide comments. For example, I think what you brought up is a great example of like early termination, but it's a particular dangerous drug to discontinue. But maybe the protocol doesn't specify a certain way to discontinue, so it could cause certain PIs to just discontinue it unsafely. Like that would be something you would write in your report that your lead CRA, if it's a good one, or just an average one, will bring it up to the medical monitor and they'll decide to amend the protocol most likely, just to avoid those kind of confusions. Okay. And that would not be possible without people like you. Because mm -hmm. they're these protocols are never perfect. That's that's why they amend them four or five times. They think they get it right the first time and then in the real world it's that's not how it works. They they, they discover mistakes. Anything else? Binder. Now it'll be interesting. I think regulatory binder review will be a lot easier with e okay. in the future. Okay. Okay. It's also potentially dangerous for career because it's so easy to access remotely. You may not need a CRA to go okay. do the business. Right, right. And that's where they're getting because e reg, I mean, there's two things here, right? It's e -reg, regulatory and source. Like, if those are both electronic, and you can do both of those remotely. So, you need a CRA. Right? But you still need one, but they're remote. They're going to, and their jobs will evolve. Because you can't just not monitor it either, and you need to know what you're doing to look at the e -reg. If you don't know what you're doing looking at a physical paper, you're not going to know what you're doing looking at a one online. Right? So you still need... You're still going to need CRAs, but the role of a CRA is going to evolve. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so because I, I think they would give you. I think they would give. I think that will allow for more studies. What we've been seeing is um, an increasing supply of studies every year. So, and we're not seeing more CRAs. We're seeing the same CRAs do more. So I don't think so. Okay. As long as the economy keeps booming. Mm -hmm. Now, a great More depression studies. can wipe it all out. <laughs> but provided that that doesn't happen, just a simple recession is not going to really affect it too much either because there's still a shortage. Right? And the e source and e reg, we're just, this is like 5% of studies. It's increasing, but it's we're nowhere near everything being electronic. Mm -hmm. It's in the early days, but we're switching to e-source here too. Okay. Uh, E-reg will be later, but then we'll switch there also. Everything will be digital pretty soon. You don't need any of this. It will just be two laptops, like your laptop, your laptop, and then an iPad for each of you. So you have the EDC on your laptop mm -hmm. and the e-source on the iPad. And you're just reviewing that one. Okay. You said laptop with a hook to another monitor. Yeah. Open one here. Yeah. Open one. Yeah. Yep. This is two monitors. That's one. right. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. So any other any place where you guys feel like you're uh, unclear? Uh, it was about the labs. They were asking uh, have PK lab samples being prepared and stored correctly. We could not answer some of those. Right. Yeah. But in real life, if you were at the site, you would mm -hmm. get up and find the coordinator, mm -hmm. Monica or Kobe, mm -hmm. 
and tell him, hey, stop eating donuts and find me the the PK. Right. right. Okay. Okay. And so that's what I do. That's not it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask what you need because if you don't ask, the site's not going to give you. They don't know what's on your report. Mm -hmm. They have no idea, nor do they care. So you need to you need to be um, vocal about okay. what you request. But yeah, like get up and go see the PK, and it's more difficult at uh, universities and hospitals yeah. because the there's like twenty people in charge of 20 different things. So your coordinator, you may ask your coordinator, hey, I need to see the PK. And the coordinator says, oh, I don't actually know. This person does it. Let me go get them. And then that person's nowhere to be found and you need to go because your flight is going to leave. Mm -hmm. So now you have, now you have an open action item that you need to follow up with. This is why it's stressful. These little things, they add up. And it's more stressful at larger institutions than smaller ones. Here, like a clinic like this, Monica knows everything. Anything you need, she'll have it or Kobe. Mm -hmm. At a place like a University of California, Los Angeles, they're, they're not going to know. They may not even know who you need to talk to. So are they, are they successful? Are they? they are, yeah. Because eventually you'll figure it out and then you'll know who to go to. Like me, when I when I am scheduling my monitoring visits for a university, I have to get like three different people to say, okay, that's a good date for us. Okay. When I'm monitoring at a small site, it's just the coordinator. Okay. That's it. The coordinator checks that the PI is available, and that's it. But at university, it's like you have to go through more people which makes it tough for like even simple thing like that. Like, let me see your PK sample. And let's say you couldn't, right? Let's say this is real life. You couldn't find somebody who can show you the PK sample. Mm -hmm. There should be a PK log okay. somewhere. Okay. And even if they can't give it to you that day, mm -hmm. it's, it's an action item that person has to email it to you. Okay. okay? But again, it's something, it's better if you get it there because it's, you don't Safe have to follow up. And all that, yeah. Because by tomorrow, you're going to go monitor someone else. They're going to have their own issues. Maybe. And the last thing you want to think about is this PK log. So what's the average day, say, on Monday morning, and you are CRA, and how many hours is it? Depends what kind of visit. Like, if it's a SIV, it could be short, like one to three hours, one to four hours. If it's interim monitoring visit, again, depends on the amount of patient activity. If there's a lot of data to review and a lot of changes to the regulatory, it's an all-day thing, like 8 to 6, 9 to 5, and then your report. If it's very little activity and no regulatory changes, maybe like a 4-hour visit, and then your report. So it just depends. And I think the one good thing about CRAs, well, good for many people, is no day is the same. So it's like kind of, it's not really boring because it's always something different. That's what real CRAs have told me. But some people prefer the routines. But with the CRA job, it's not really a routine because every site's different. Every visit's going to be different. There's different issues. So for this study, see, we have all these uh, binders and folders here. So each time the CRA came in, they had to do this for each subject? For anything they haven't monitored yet, yeah. And for the stuff they have monitored before, they look to make sure the action items are completed. Because you see the action items at the end? I mean, these could be like 20, like a list of 20 things. And if you see how it says resolution date or ongoing? I mean, you don't want too many ongoing. Like, the site needs to get those things done, right? The sites can be put on a screening hold if it gets too bad by the sponsor. We found that there are some sections here without the necessary documents. Is it that uh, they never had them? Which section? Like here, let me see. Uh, investigator news, letter. Ah, 
operational procedure. So whenever you find something like management. that, yeah, whenever you find something like that with nothing in it, mm -hmm. that's the perfect time to tell the site to put a note to file in there. Mm -hmm. What? Where is this? Usually it's with the contract. The contract is never in the right binder, mm -hmm. but there's always a section for con like financial. You see. And I knew it's not there, mm -hmm. but it should be a note to file, like a uh, a good CRA would have put a sticky here and said, "Hey, where is note to file? Where the contract is located?" Subject identification. Mm -hmm. Well, that's important. Yeah. So a note to file. Where is it? Yeah. Note to file for all that. Usually the sites have explanation. Like we keep Subject all those. Yeah. So usually yeah, sites have a good explanation. We keep all those things in a different binder because okay. this binder is too big. Hey! What well, is you? Hey! But uh, note to file. Note to file because the auditor, auditor is not gonna know. Like if FDA usually audits years after a study is over, mm -hmm. and by that point, like the staff are not here. Mm -hmm. That's new people. Yeah. And they don't know if there's a blank section and FDA asks okay. them where is this, they're not going to know. Mm -hmm. So note to file is going to help everybody. Okay. So when we go out and we look at the red binder like this, we just take note of whatever is missing and then we draw the attention. Yeah. To the What's missing, there's a reason why the sponsor wants those in there. Mm -hmm. You can keep them somewhere else, Okay. but I, we need a document. Okay. It can't just be blank. So the note to file would be here. No, in each section or in each missing. section yeah. saying where this is. Yes. Because okay. the contract could be put somewhere else. Okay. The newsletters can be kept so somewhere we else. Have multiple notifiers. Correct. Okay. That's why I like notifiers. Anything else? This was pretty good.